The 100% correlation to opportunity in 2024 is how you produce content on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snap, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, period. It is the actual answer to the quiz. What I'm trying to understand is, I kinda think you know that, so why are you not doing it? Because the excuse of I can't afford it, yes you can, all of you in this room buy dumb shit. Order ever in your life from Seamless or Uber Eats, dumb shit. Ever take an Uber, dumb shit. Have clothes with a logo on it, dumb shit. If attention is the number one asset. It's an interesting time of year to give a talk when it's this early in the year because everyone's, what are we in the 10th? By now you've already probably broken one or two of your core things that you promised you were gonna do (laughs) this year. Um, And I, I think about that a lot actually, the whole New Year's resolution thing and how hard it is to sustain it and really, if, if you follow my content or if you've stumbled on it, it's really interesting about the two places I think about. You know, I, I use this term clouds and dirt a lot and because a lot of it is just perspective and then execution. And most of the content I put out early in my career, um, and I still do, is very much around the execution. Like I can sit here for the next 45 minutes and tell you why I know most of you are not producing enough content on Facebook right now because Facebook's organic reach and paid ads, given how so many content creators are overly focused just on Instagram and TikTok, has become a huge opportunity like it was almost seven years ago to drive your business. And I love talking about that shit. And I know that some of the people in this room right now literally just took note of that and are gonna go home and explore with it, and Facebook's gonna be a more important platform for you than Instagram is right now, because too many people are stuck on Instagram. Not that Instagram's not important, it's just so competitive, that's why all your organic reach is down, right? So I can talk about all that, and I can talk about a lot of other tactics, like for the people that actually have time. I posted this this morning, like the thing I'm most sad about right now is that I just don't have time, and I'm not that guy. When I, who I was in my 20s and 30s, but anyone who's got the luxury of time and has ambition, and I don't think you're at this conference and paid to be here and spent your time to be here if you're not hungry or trying to make something happen. If I'm someone in this audience right now and I have three, four, five hours a day, and I don't mean you have it because most people don't have it. I mean when you really audit your time, you realize you're wasting three, four, five hours a day on dumb shit that you don't need to be doing, which is all of us. That's all I think about. How do I get another 15 minutes, another 15 minutes? But if I had three or four hours a day, I would be streaming live on TikTok and Twitch constantly for my business, whatever you're doing here. And like, but again, it's a hard game. The, the biggest issue for entrepreneurs, executives, parents, the world, is that most things that are remarkable are hard. And, and then occasionally you'll find someone who blasts it off real quick and you decide to point to the point oh 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 one percent person that hit it instead of realizing the 99.9% of people that hit it after doing something properly and hard for a decade. I know that if people paid attention to what I just said right now and go back and get very serious about going live on TikTok and Twitch for four hours a day, that it's gonna take them six months to get any level of any kind of traction, and I'm talking five days a week, which is 20 hours a week, and I know for most people after four to five days, let alone weeks, they'll give up, because that's all I've watched for the last 25 years. When I talked about you should get an e-commerce site or you should do email or you should do Google AdWords or you should do Facebook or you should do YouTube and on and on and on, it's just, you know, as I reflect, you know, I love this time of year because you get a little downtime during the holidays, you think about different shit because you're out of your patterns. And when I think, you know, obviously I knew I had this talk early on, I'm like, how do I mix it up? What do I want to talk about? I want to talk about the fact that most of you are just going to give up too soon. And it's because you just want it easier than it actually is. And it's really not about the tactics, it's about your perspective. So much of what is fucking everybody up is they're worried about everybody else. In two ways. Somebody else's success is not taking out of yours. There is so much unlimited everything. Money, fame, opportunity, so much 
that getting fixated on someone else's success is hurting so many people as if that's actually taking out of yours. Do you know how many people, when I put out certain things, say, well, someone else is doing that already? I'm like, someone else is doing everything already. There's fucking 17 trillion versions of me. Like, like always, like, I laugh at like people being stuck in like 40 years ago mentality. I, was, I just flew from London, so 12 hours. I got to sleep a little bit, but I also got to do a ton of work. Some, somebody wrote me an email, I was like, before I tell you my big idea, you gotta sign an NDA. I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> It's not 1986 up in this bitch no more. <laughs> Delete, fuck you. And, and it was funny because I took note of like, I hadn't heard somebody say you need to sign an NDA in so long. But when I look around and what I'm trying to think through as I sit with all of you, I'm like, what are they thinking about that is over, that isn't real? This is why I'm so fascinated by perspective. You know, life, is what you decide to look at. Like, you know, I, I wish you could see my social media feeds. Like, it's like kittens getting saved off a tree. Like literally the post that caught my attention the most today in my feed was a post about two kids driving in Massachusetts the other day. It was like a news article about it or like a clip. They were driving, it was snowing, and they made the dad pull over because the guy who was shoveling the sidewalk was in a wheelchair and they were, you saw that? And they jumped out and helped him. Right? It is nice. And, and I get to see nice shit in my feed because I decide to focus on positivity. Everyone's like, the algorithm, social media. No, no, it's you. You do understand these algorithms are empty. They just want to keep you on. I can tell you everything about yourself by opening your phone and looking at your algorithms. They're not trying to make you sad. You're sad. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> if I could leave this stage with anything in 2024, I would make this the year for all of you to finally be 100% accountable. Like if I can accomplish anything in this talk, if one person in this room just decides, finally, this year, I am going to blame 100% of the shit I'm upset about on myself and realize that doesn't mean you're gonna be depressed and sad, it's gonna mean that you're gonna be happy because you can do something about it. We have become infatuated in pointing fingers. 2024 is here, we're gonna point a lot of fingers. We got an election year. You guys are gonna be real fucking sad this year. Do you know what my favorite thing is, like rolling around in life and hanging out with other entrepreneurs and winners? is when they try to blame them not having a good year after they claim they're so fucking gangster on a president. <laughs> Let me just give you a news alert that you can sit with for the rest of your fucking life. If you blame the sitting president, Obama, Trump, Biden, Clinton, whoever's next, if you as an entrepreneur blame the sitting president for why you're not doing well, you're a fucking loser. I'm aware, this is a very nuanced statement. I'm aware that macro things happen under administrations. I'm just aware that millions of people aren't impacted by who the sitting administration is and they navigate through the reality of it. That's just the truth. We have to get off this kick of blaming our parents for everything, our governments for everything, the platforms for everything. Here's an important nuance of what I'm about to say. Because there's all sorts of shit. There's systematic shit. P parenting really does fuck people up. Governments do matter. Like, it matters. That's not what I'm saying. Please understand what I'm saying. If you are dwelling about it, it's already over. It could be 100% true. You don't think I have problems? 
You don't think anybody in this room does? There's not a person in this fucking room, let alone the eight billion people on earth, that can't sit in front of you and tell you 25 things that are fucked up for them. As if the audacity that we have gotten into in society as thinking people have it good, and by the way, even if somebody popped up right here and says, I do have it good, everything's good, tomorrow they might not. Tomorrow might be the day that their sibling gets diagnosed with terminal cancer. Tomorrow might be the day where they make a misstep. Tomorrow might be the day when they walk out the door and get hit by a tree. That would suck. (laughs) Why am I going here? I'll tell you why. Somewhere along the last 20 years of living a public life, talking about business opportunities, the first five years I was so confused of like, why are people not doing this? Like, here it is. Ready, I'll break it down. Making content on the eight social networks that matter the most will lead to every single thing you want to happen professionally. As much of it as humanly possible. How many people here have consumed my content? Raise your hand. How many of you have heard me say that shit before? So now the question is, why not? I've been very consistent. So why do you not post 45 pieces of content a day? Yeah, I mean like, the the real question becomes, somebody will make an excuse of like, I don't have the resources or the time. That's cool, that's fine. It's like, you know, I think of business and I think about this combo we're having, like working out, right? Like, you can like read about (laughs) push-ups. Like there's a lot of you in this audience that consuming the information makes you think you're doing it. It's very true, brother. Like how many more fucking books do you want to buy? I got a new one coming, so buy that one, but. (laughs) But like how many more videos? How many more courses? How many more conferences? For a lot of people, unfortunately, doing the process of this makes them think they're doing it. I'm not gonna go to a conference like this, I never did. Not that I'm better, I I really need you to hear this. It's just that I just got raised in a way where I realized doing the work was the game, right? And I actually think it was my mistake to not go to things like this coming up the game because sometimes you need to step out. Like, I actually regret not having a mentor coming up the game. I lived in my own cocoon. I regret not coming to conferences. As a matter of fact, the second I decided to go to conferences is how I learned about Web 2.0 and did all my Twitter. And, like, so I don't think it's wrong. I just don't want some of the people in here being career content consumers. And there is some career content consumers in this bitch right now. It's kind of like the way we talk shit on the internet or the way we support shit on the internet. You think typing it out on Twitter means you did something. My friends, 2024 needs to be the year you finally do shit. But what's interesting is the reason I'm bouncing back and forth is 2024, if you're gonna do stuff, I realized that it was the perspective. It was how you see the world, right? If you're not in a good place, it's hard. Like, one of the reasons most of you do not produce as much content as you possibly can is because you don't do well with the negative feedback when you do, or the performance of it not doing as well as you want it to. The, the thing that is breaking my heart is knowing how many of you are not posting what you really want to post because subconsciously you're concerned that it's not going to do as well as your normal posts. You're like literally living your life for the likes. There's so many people that want to get out of their niche, want to talk about something else, but because you're used to getting 413 to 515 likes, and you know if you took, every time you've ever stepped out, you only got 80 and it feels like shit, you're just staying in this pocket and we're just, we just lack a fundamental relationship with losing. Do you know why I'm on this stage? Because I'm addicted to losing. Let me break it down for you. I'm addicted to losing. Now, I'm addicted to micro losing so that I can macro win. 
The reason I got hot four or five years ago in my content for the ones that follow about eighth place trophies is because we fucked the kids up with it. Why did we fuck the kids up with it? It was well intended. We didn't want little seven-year-old Johnny when he lost to be sad. I get it, that's sweet. If I brought a seven-year-old up right here, you'd be like, aw. <laughs> right? But if I was like, Johnny, you fucking suck, you'd be like, what the fuck, Gary? <laughs> but I would be doing Johnny a favor. What we did for the last 25 years in modern parenting is we demonized losing. We overcoddled, which was in theory optically looking like it was right, but what we did was we made them scared to lose. We took getting B's and C's and D's in school, which was already a problem in the 80s and 90s, and we took it into everything. We took it into places it should have never been. The only good thing about sports is it's non-debatable. You either won or you didn't, and we even fucked that up. And so now you have 22 year olds who are just scared. They're scared to lose. If they get fired, if they this, if they, everything is the end of the world. Do you understand nothing matters? Nothing. nothing. Besides the health you have and the ones you love, what matters? Like this is why I am able to, nap. I, the gentleman who introduced me said something very nice to me backstage. He's like, hey, I've been doing this a long time. I just wanna thank you because the reality is 99% of people are not authentic. They act some sort of way, but backstage they're not nice. I appreciate you're like that. It meant a lot to me. But let me tell you why I'm like that. It's because when I get the claps and the accolades and dollars and the followers, I can't hear it. I don't think I'm special. I understand that I'm good at business, okay. You're good at shit too. I suck at a lot of things. If the world was predicated on how good you are being handy around the house, I'd be a fucking loser. <laughs> By the way, I was a fucking loser from first to 12th grade, going back to me being addicted with losing. The reason I'm good is because the world told me I was bad my whole life. When you get D's and F's in the 80s and 90s, your parents, friends, your friends' parents, and every teacher, every grown up you know in the world, tells you you're a piece of shit. So I got used to it. You know how easy it is to not give a shit? When you got used to not giving a shit? You like that one? <laughs> it's true. And then I played sports all the time. I was pretty crafty at some shit, but I lost a lot. And you lose in sports, and I grew up in Jersey in the 80s, got into fights and got punched in the mouth. By the way, that's another thing. We need to bring fighting back. <laughs> I've come to realize, do you know why all these people talk shit on Twitter? It's because in the 80s and 90s, if you talk shit, someone punched you. <laughs> like I think seven year olds and 10 year olds and 11 year olds at school, and so they should fight. <laughs> these kids have no idea, they don't know what a punch in the face feels like. And they definitely don't know what a spanking feels like. How many people here were hit by their parent? Raise their hand. Yeah. Actually, stand up if you've been hit by your parent. You can sit. Notice how that got a razz. I promise you when I ask that question in 20 years, no one's standing the fuck up. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, I can get there mentally of like understanding what people think about it, though I think a good smack in the ass will get you straight proper. What I completely can't understand is the fact that nobody gets grounded anymore. Forget about the spank. People don't get grounded. And you know what that leads to? Growing up, realizing there's no repercussions for doing the wrong thing. And this is where we're at. So we can talk like I did for the last 10, 15 minutes about the way it's coming up, but now the question becomes, how about us? So it's been fun for the last 15 minutes laughing about the kids coming up, but what about you? Because I promise you, if you are not completely where you want to be, you're doing something wrong.
What is it? What are you doing that's making you come to this conference today? Right? Some people want to triple down on what is where I, I'm sure there are plenty of people here like good and they're like fuck it I want to double good but I have a funny feeling there's a lot more people in here being like I can't get it to click and the thing is going back to falling in love with micro losing is my belief the unlock for the majority of you is to get a little bit more comfortable with this comfort losing and losing comes in a lot of forms right Going back to, again, why it's so easy to give a business talk in 2024 when you're me, of course you have to have business acumen, you have to have something to sell. But do you understand that it has never been easier to create demand to sell something than it is today? That every entrepreneur five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years ago had it so much harder than all of you to create demand, you can post for free on a social network and sell shit. Who here is over 45, raise your hand. Can you all tell these people how insane that is? <laughs> we grew up where you have to spend money to get people to know shit. Ads cost money, and of course you can spend ads on social, but you can post on social for free. I, that's, when I, that's what really gets me crazy when people are mad at the algorithms or the social networks. It's fucking free. <laughs> like, I'm um, shadow banned. No, you're not, you just suck. <laughs> you're not shadow banned. It's, you're not that serious, I promise you. You are not shadow banned. You just make content that nobody gives a fuck about. You know why? Because you make content that is selfish. You make content for you to get followers. You make content for you to get likes. You make content for you to sell something to someone. You make content that is selfish. That's it. Like, has any, do you understand literally every time I post, I look at it and I'm like, why would somebody look at this? That's it. The frameworks of how to attack this game are simple. Executing is it hard if you don't know what's happening within you. Right? Because you know, I think, you know, this is a really, again, I love this time of year. I need to start making sure I, Victoria, make sure I do a talk in the first two weeks of the year every year. This is like real to me. Like, this is such a good time because you know, life's about, it's like sports. It's nice to have a football stadium right next door. Life's about momentum. It's momentum. Right? And so the reason a lot of people are not doing what I'm talking about is the momentum's not in the right direction. They lost a step. They were better three years ago than today. Like, you get caught. But like, again, just like when, you know, when holidays you need a little something, January you want to cut down, like, you got to get the momentum. That first day in the gym is impossible. Even for me, I'm a workaholic. And when I go on vacation for two weeks like I just did, the first day back, I'm like, I want to retire. <laughs> now, once I break the seal an hour in, I'm like, no, no, this is my fucking game. But literally like two hours earlier on the first Monday, I'm like, I'm not doing it. And then by 10 a.m. I'm like, this is my spot. It's like tough to, right? I'm sure for a lot of you, that's what the gym is, right? No, 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 you get there and you get that euphoria, right? Or you eat like shit for like three months and you're fucking losing and then you get that one good day and you switch, like it's momentum. You must figure out what's going on in your dome right here that is stopping you. I'm gonna say it again. Back to school. Remember school? I don't know if I see some kids in here. Do they still have Scantron sheets? <laughs> Probably not, right? They do? Those used to be my favorite. I would just walk, I was such a bad student. I would literally walk into every high school test. If they were like Scantron, I'm like, yes. I would take it and be like, C, D, B, A, C, D, B. Give up. Give a fuck. <laughs> not because I'm cool, but because I was smart enough to pay attention that Getting straight A's in school had no correlation to being happy and successful. Yeah. Just does it. There's nothing wrong, by the way, of being good in school. As a matter of fact, I desperately need as many people to be good at school as possible because I need a lot of employees over the next 40 years. So keep pushing your kids for that robotic straight A shit because I need employees. Um, no, but what, 
you know, when I think about this, like, we really, really need to understand ourselves because you've got to get the momentum because like a Scantron, A, B, C, D, E, I'm literally going to say it again. I'm going to recall it. Please, I need everyone to hear this. Whatever it costs that you can afford, of course. And cost is not just money. Cost is your time, your effort, your energy. Whatever it costs for you in 2024, regardless of what you do, real estate agent. Uh, how many people here are employees of companies? Raise your hand. Raise. It's fine. It's good. I know I made that joke, but please, raise. <laughs> for y'all, just posting on LinkedIn once a day about your expertise or what you see in your work will lead to people recruiting you to pay you more for jobs in your same sector. The 100% correlation to opportunity in 2024 is how you produce content on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snap, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, period. It is the actual answer to the quiz. What I'm trying to understand is, I kind of think you know that. So why are you not doing it? Because the excuse of I can't afford it, yes you can. All of you in this room buy dumb shit. <laughs> Order ever in your life from Seamless or Uber Eats, dumb shit. Ever take an Uber, dumb shit. Have clothes with a logo on it, dumb shit. If, on those three things, let me throw one more out there, buy a $6 hot beverage, dumb shit. All the things I just mentioned are not dumb shit if you're good. But they are very dumb shit if you're not good. And it's a really fucking funny game momentum because the more not good you are, the more you're buying clothes with logos on it. Because you need a quick little hit of feeling good for a second. This is one big game of two very simple energies. When I say one big game, life. Life is one big game of two energies. Self-esteem and insecurity. And we all fit somewhere from the extremes on both. And it is such a big deal. Because let me tell you about extreme insecurity. It's actually one of the ways that people use that energy to actually amass financial success. They are so deeply insecure, they go for it at all costs. And they figure it out. The problem is, the people that I've seen climb the mountain with deep insecurity and get there financially, can't sustain it. Because if you're dark, you're dark. The other side that gets there is called gratitude. There's, that's the other fuel. You're just so fucking grateful for what you have. Think about this, no bullshit. Like do this for me, please, just for a second. If you can, for just fucking 30 seconds with me on this one, think about how much energy in a day, in a week, in a month, you spend on what you don't have versus how much energy you spend on being grateful for what you have. It is so out of whack, it just is. And here's why. This is gonna give you the insight, especially for the people in this room. We're in America, it's too much prosperity. World wars used to reset us. The depression, like the 20s, they were fucking balling. But the depression reset us. And you were just happy you had a little fucking porridge. We just have had it too good for too long that we're fucking confused. And so I believe that the majority of you in here's highest value of accomplishing a business goal, if this is a business conference, is actually based on your perspective. Because the answer to selling more real estate or t-shirts or whatever the fuck you do is content on social networks. Of course there's other shit, but that is the easiest, and I hate that word, but I'm gonna use it. That is the easiest way for good shit to happen. And so we have to leave this conference 
finding a way to produce more. I'm gonna go back to some tactics now, now that I think I've done my job to establish perspective. I really, 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 really want to talk about documenting versus creating. So okay, you're hype now. You're like, you know what, fuck it, Gary's right, this is my year. Right, cool, you're like, you know what, I've heard it enough, I'm, yes. Now the problem is tomorrow. <laughs> and you're trying to figure out what to make, right? One of the reasons I love this concept of documenting, not creating, is I'm concerned that you don't know what to make. Which is why I love live streaming so much. And I'm talking about live streaming like go live at your desk while you're working and have three people watching at first. And like while you're on your laptop, like look over and be like, hey. <laughs> I'm being serious. But notice what I'm saying. I want everyone to hear this. What I just said is the content equivalent to the first day you ever go into the gym after not being in shape for 30 years and you just get on a treadmill and you go super slow. My first workout 10 years ago, 10 years ago, Mike Vacanti and I were joking about it the other day. I did eight atrocious push-ups. <laughs> I never built muscle before. It's all I could do. If you're sitting here today and you've done like two half-ass efforts at making content on the internet and you decide to live stream, you're just maybe gonna be able to eke out a hay. <laughs> but I can do a lot more in the gym 10 years later. I just need you to know it's gonna be hard. And I just need you to know that that's good. Because everyone's saying, but what about this person? What about them? Yes, they actually executed when I was yelling at all of you four and a half years ago to go on TikTok, but you didn't fucking listen, did you? And so they listened, they executed, and it worked for them. Sorry that you didn't. That has nothing to do with you. Just because a couple people went viral fast, that has nothing to do with you. And more importantly, the question is, what do you want to accomplish out of this? I assume, again, that this is the context of a business conference. I assume you want to grow your business. You can't sell anyone anything unless you have their attention. If you go into the bathroom right now in a stall by yourself and start trying to sell something, you're not gonna sell anything. You're by yourself. <laughs> you have to have someone's attention to be able to sell to someone. The shocking percentage of our customers' attention now sit on these eight platforms, on these devices. It's stunning. And the opportunity is real. The problem is it's hard. And most people give up and most people don't know what to say. But all you should say is what you know. Let me give you some tactics. How many people know what a green screen video is? There's like the headline you talk over. Just raise your hands, please. Great, so for the ones that don't know, if you've seen on TikTok or Facebook, it's like a human, and in the background there's like clearly a clip from like a newspaper article or something. Like, it is training wheels for all of you. If you're struggling to figure out how to make content, in your business or your interest or your genre, Google real estate, sneakers, mortgages, insurance, apparel, protein vitamins, I don't know what you do. Google it. Go to Google News, look at the news, find an article with a headline that makes sense to you that you have a thought on because I'd like to think you have a thought on the fucking business you're in. <laughs> what do I do? Talk about what you fucking know. Take a screenshot of it. If you don't know how to do a Google, a, a green screen on social media like some of you are thinking right now, good news, I'll tell you how to do that. There's a site called Google. <laughs> you type in, how do I make a green screen video? Enter, they will tell you, for free. <laughs> and start doing it. Everybody here can do green screen. Everyone here can do green screen. And it, by the way, as we sit here today, maybe not in six months, maybe not in three years, but as we sit here today, a green screen video will get more organic reach than a normal video on most platforms. All social media is about is an acronym that I call PAC. Platforms and culture. 
You have to know how a platform works. Does a reel versus a main feed post video work better on Instagram and Facebook? Or does a picture work better? Should you do a picture and then a video? Should you do a two minute video or a 30 second video? What should the thumbnail look like? What's the first three seconds of a video look like? What's your copy? It takes skill. You should spend time at night. Again, how many people would like to grow this year? Raise your hand. Great. Idea. Instead of at night, watching dumb shit, why don't you consume information on how to be better at making content on social networks? You can, you know, and this goes back to like what I see in my feed. Instead of watching the news, whose job is to scare you? Or watching fucking, I don't know, like blind marriage millionaire, what the fuck you watch? <laughs> People literally complaining about their lives but watching three fucking hours of Temptation Island. I get it, you're escaping. The same shit we do with drugs and alcohol, I understand, or logos, I get escapism. I just don't want you to escape your life, I want you to enjoy your life. Do you understand that if you are looking forward to Friday, it's bad? I know this to be true because that's how I lived my life from eight years old to 20. I looked forward to Friday because I hated Monday through Friday. Because I didn't give a fuck about Saturn or the periodic table or the fucking Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> I like that recall, that was a good one. Remember that shit? If these kids, where is that little, how old is that little man? He's 10. 10, brother, if you understood what the world was like pre-internet, it would blow your little fucking mind. <laughs> Do you remember going to the mall because you told your friend you were gonna meet at the water fountain at 415, but for some reason their mom got caught up and they weren't there and you were like, fuck it, and you'd see them the next day at school? <laughs> like, shit was crazy. <laughs> New kid came to school with a beeper, fucking narc. <clears throat> My friends, this is, it's actually stunning how simple life can be if you're willing to make it simple. The problem is you have to stop impressing your mom, your dad, your spouse, your neighbor. Too many of you are living your life for other people's opinion. The real answer to the quiz of why you're not posting enough is you overvalue other people's opinions over your own happiness. It is really a pandemic. That's a real one. You over, do you understand you overvalue your sister's thought, your mom's thought. You must make 2024 the year of accountability. If your mom is super negative and fucked you up, do not talk to her eight times a day. <laughs> talk to her once every eight days. I'm not saying cut your mom out, it's your mom. You came out of that shit. <laughs> But if your mom is fucking poison and you're a, do you understand besides that little dude and probably somebody else in here, you're fucking grown now. Make 2024 the year you stop complaining about the same shit. I got it, your dad drank. Most dads drank back then. I got it. You fucked up and took the wrong job. You married the wrong girl. This fucking happened. Donnie fucking screwed you. I get it. And? You're just fucking in it. We can't, like dwelling is a disease. And this is gonna be a tough year. Like I said earlier, it's gonna be super negative out there. I am so not looking forward to this shit. These fucking politicians, as if they give a fuck. I love when you think they give a fuck. <laughs> Promise. Stop, stop feeding into the fucking bad shit. Focus on yourself, focus on your loved ones. Choose positivity. You have to understand, 
If you have decided to be cynical and negative, it is by default that, because you can find it. But if you choose to be positive and optimistic, you can find the two little kids helping the guy in the wheelchair shovel his driveway. You get to choose. Actually, you know what? I've never said this out loud. I just thought of it right here on the spot, so this is fucking good. Let's make a pledge to this. If this talk hits, if you feel like, fuck it, I'm ready to go, every single time you are in your feeds, if the post does not make you feel good, unfollow and mute that person. And then, after you're done with that, that's your day to day, that's what you now do. That's what you now do. Or, be careful, because sometimes it triggers you in a different way. If you find yourself over envious of someone, delete and mute them too. Because there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people that sell negativity in an interesting little package. They hide it as, I'm just trying to be aspirational. But posting pictures of yourselves on private planes all day, flexing Rolexes, is not bringing all of you a lot of value. Now, I'm not gonna blame those people. You're a big boy and big girl. Don't feel bad, feel happy for them. But if you're not there yet, mute that shit. Unfollow that shit. And then, when you're done with all that, the last thing you do before you go to bed in that feed is you go to search and you type in positivity. And you let the results pop up on that grid and you click a couple of things and you follow a couple people and like a couple of positive things. You will wake up on April's Fool's Day with a much more positive life. Whoever in this room is able to cut out more negativity and bring in more positivity in 2024 will win. I'm gonna leave you with this. So we just broke that down. Now, in June, if you're still in a bad mood, that's on you. 2024 needs to be the year of accountability. The truth is, and this is tough, most people are most comfortable in dwelling in darkness. You know why? It's easy. Don't be that person. Misery fucking loves company. And there's a lot of people feeling this way because the lack of accountability has hit an all-time level. But there are millions of people who are thrilled and happy and living simple. And I want you to be one of those people because I don't know if you know this, you were not born for a very long time. And I don't know if you know this, but when you die, you're dead forever. <laughs> and so we get to be here for a little period of time. Why the fuck are you not enjoying it? Thank you, Bay Area.